Thank you so much for reminding us uh, once that Jesus is coming again. Everything we should do, we should do with this thought in our minds. Jesus is coming again. So I'm going to ask uh, next for the next item, Emma, to come here for uh, experience. And uh, I'm going to ask Boris and Marina to prepare for the next. I hope you all are enjoying your day so far, and um, it's wonderful that we have the privilege to be here. So many of the 
have Mr. Rizzo opening this canvassing project that's coming up next week. And I just wanted to share a little experience that I had while I was canvassing to help uplift the canvassers and hopefully encourage them as well. And um, I just wanted to share, this was back in Roanoke when we had our project there for about a week or so. It was a great experience. I'm really grateful for that. And um, the day was starting out really slowly. We were canvassing my partner and I, and it was, you know, it was going. And we reached this one lady at her door, and I knock at her door, and I tell her the canvas, and she's like, oh, I, I don't have um, any money on me, and I... Um, and then I tell her about um, our Happiness Digest, and I was like, well, we have this here. It's a great book for any donation. She's like, oh, I can give you a donation. And she comes back with like $4 or so, and um, she was like, imagine, imagine this. If everyone in this world gave just a dollar, everyone would have what they needed. And in my head, I was like, if everyone had Jesus in this world, imagine what a place the world would be. And it's our job to tell people about Jesus. Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And um, as the day goes on, you know, that lady, she was just so enthusiastic. She kind of lifted my mood. Like, she was just so happy. And, um... You know, she gave my partner and I a hug. She's like, oh, you know, I want to give you a hug. And, and I was like, oh, thank you, and went on. And as the day goes on, we, we didn't have much success, but I always remembered that lady. And um, we finally get to this, our second to last house, and this man opens the door, a very young man. You would never expect that he would purchase any spiritual books or any books at all. And we canvassed to him, and he ends up purchasing um, one of our health books, and he also purchases Your Questions, God's Answers, and The Desire of Ages. And after that, it's like, wow, it makes you, it makes success so much sweeter when you realize that, you know, God is just waiting for you to find that one soul, even if it's one soul, like Brother Adrian said in his sermon, you know, God would give everything for, just to save that one soul. And, um, I just realized the value that canvassing has. Even if it's one person every day, it makes such a great impact, you know? And, and that person, they're going to come to you one day in heaven, and they're going to say, hey, thank you. It's because of you that I'm here. It's because of you that I know Jesus. And I just feel like we're going to have so many of those experiences while we're here, and I pray that all the canvassers are going to be uplifted and encouraged to, even if you don't sell anything or if you don't reach anyone in the beginning, that Christ is always, he always has someone there for you, ready for you to reach them. And this is my wish and prayer for all of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for this wonderful experience. So I'm going to invite here uh, Boris and uh, Marina. And uh, I'm going to ask um, Clara to prepare with experience. Good morning and a happy, well, have a good day and happy Sabbath. Je voudrais juste donner quelques informations sur l'œuvre que nous allons jouer. I just wanted to give a little bit of information on uh, what we're going to play. Voilà, cette œuvre est inspirée par un verset de la Bible. This uh, uh, piece is inspired by a Bible verse uh, that says, "Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man." Voilà, je voulais juste vous demander de juste d'imaginer, d'utiliser votre imagination pour comprendre comment le Christ croissait parmi les hommes en grâce devant Dieu aussi. I'll ask you to please use your imagination to um, see how Christ was growing up in grace and in, in the favor of men. Merci. C'est toi qui as composé. Oui. And so he, he composed it. He didn't want to say it, but he was the one writing it.
Thank you so much for this wonderful song. So next item, uh, Clara. And uh, I ask uh, Bianca and Martha to prepare for the next item. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. How many of you are familiar with Abraham's story when God asked him to move from his house to a land which he did not know where he was going? Well, I believe that God calls everyone in pretty much the same way. You will not know exactly what path God is preparing for you. You don't know what, what um, experiences God is preparing you for, but all he asks for is that you just accept and you, and you decide to follow him. So today I'm going to be sharing my experience on how God brought me into the canvassing work. And it was about four years ago, uh, in 2014, when I received a text message from one of my friends, a leader of the um, LA project that was happening that year, and she said, Clara, there's only a few more spaces left. Would you like to join? And I was actually recently baptized, so I was, I was praying. I wanted to have a chance to work for God, but I didn't know where. And so, of course, I ran to my parents and I asked them, please, could I go participate in this project? And I had never been away for so long from my parents for a whole month. But my parents have never skipped an opportunity to help me and my brother um, be involved in the church and God's work. So they let me go, and I spent those next couple weeks practicing and practicing, and, and you could hear me even when, while I was washing the dishes, I would be saying, okay, that's fine. We have this other book here for any donation. And, um, but none of the practice that I did could ever prepare me for what was going to happen in that project. So when I got there, the work was really, really difficult. It wasn't easy from the start. Uh, I had to meet so much rejection, and it was such a humbling and learning experience that I will never forget. But there was something that kept me going, something that even though I felt like giving up, and I felt like I can't take one more uh, door shut in my face, um, and it was exactly when my knuckles were hurting from knocking on those iron doors in Los Angeles. Um, it was exactly in the, that moment that I realized I, I can't do any of this on my own. It's only through God. And God is the one that, that helps me say the right words, that God is the one that opens the hearts of the people. And so I remember on those streets of LA, I just stopped and I prayed to God and I told him, God, I can't do this on my own. It's only through your power. And I pray that you would help me to get the books to the right people that need them. And that's exactly when the miracles would happen. And, and that's what I lived for every day. I would keep going for that person who, I remember I went to one door um, after not selling anything all day. And I showed peace above the storm. And the man uh, had tears in his eyes and his voice was shaking. And he said, you're an answer to my prayer. And when I heard that, I just realized that this is the work that God wants for us. And, and after that, I just kept, I, I went to the next house and I almost started running. I just wanted to go to as many houses as possible before sunset because I knew the van was on its way and I, I just wanted to finish that street. And so even though it was hard, I just, I just fell in love with the work of canvassing. And I remember by the end of the project, my dad gave me a call and he wanted to know how the project was, how I'm doing, and I told him, Dad, when I'm coming home, I want to organize a canvassing project. And I said, but please don't stop me. And my dad replied, how could I stop you? I'm the canvassing leader of the general conference. And so 
I went back to my house and I started small. I grabbed my little brother who was so shy, and you, you cannot believe this now because he's such a great canvasser now, but he was so shy, he was 11 years old, and I took him around in my neighborhood and we canvassed. And later on, I did a seminar in my church. I went to British Columbia, I think Bianca and Marta remember that. And we did a little bit of canvassing there. Uh, and little did I know, that God would lead me across the country to Colorado, to Roanoke, and then across the border here to Toronto to have so many amazing experiences teaching other young people. Um, and I always wanted to organize a project, but I, I didn't do it myself. I would give the seminars. And I am praising the Lord because this year, uh, he helped me together with the help of other young people, and my dad was supporting. We organized a canvassing project in Roanoke, Virginia, and it was such a blessing, but the highlight of that project, I think, was on the very last day, I was canvassing uh, with someone, and he came to me and he said, uh, Clara, you know what? When I go back to my home, to my church, I'm going to organize a project myself. Amen. And when I heard that, it just came back to my mind how I told my dad that I want to organize a project. And it just, it just melted my heart because I realized that that's what I, wanted, I want to do. Um, I want to give the chance to other young people to be able to, re to answer to the Lord's call and to be able to do uh, the canvassing work for him. And uh, there are so many more opportunities. There's this project here that so many young people are here for, and I'm so excited to see you all, and I can't wait to see the experiences that you will make. Um, <clears throat> I want to read a Bible verse, and I'm sorry my throat is uh, sore, but in Matthew 9, verse 37 to 38, it says, <clears throat> The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send, send forth laborers into his harvest. There's so many opportunities. We just need people to do the work. Missionaries, young and old, everyone. Uh, so my wish and prayer and my goal with all these canvassing projects is that I can give the opportunity to all these other young people to be able to answer like Isaiah when God asked him, uh, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And, and Isaiah replied, here I am, I will go. And that's my wish and prayer. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, Clara, for your wonderful experience. So Bianca and Marta, please come. And I'm going to ask uh, after um, Ina to be ready.
Thank you so much. So Ina, please. And I'm going to ask after Brother Bruno to be ready for, uh, to give us a brief report from Martinique. Brother Bruno, thank you so much, Ina, for this wonderful song. We have Brother Bruno give us a brief report from Martinique, and after I'm going to ask Brother Adrian to prepare for a new experience. Bien, je voudrais vous adresser les salutations fraternelles de l'Église de la Martinique. I would like to bring you uh, the uh, wonderful greetings from the brethren from Martinique. Très bien. bien euh, la Martinique donc, est une île des Antilles. So Martinique is a, um, an island in the Caribbean qui comporte environ euh, un peu plus de 400 000 habitants. And we have around 400,000 inhabitants. C'est une très petite île. It's a very small island qui euh, fait 80 km de longueur. It's about 80, meters, uh, 80 km long et 40 km de largeur. And, uh, 40 km large. C'est bien que lorsqu'on arrive à, au point culminant de l'île, on peut voir les deux océans. So if we climb on the highest point of the island, we can see both oceans. La mer des Caraïbes. The Caribbean uh, uh, sea. Et l'océan Atlantique. And the Atlantic Ocean. Donc cette île aussi est, a connu une tragédie histoire. Uh, this island has a tragic history. Ou en 1902. In 1902, nous avons un fameux volcan we have a famous volcano qu'on nomme le Mont Pelé. The Mount uh, Pelé. Il faut savoir que les Pelés c'est une catégorie de volcans. It's a category of volcanoes that is um, qui sont les plus dangereux au monde. That is the, the, the worst uh, uh, in, uh, in the world. Donc il n'y en a pas beaucoup, mais ce sont des volcans qui explosent. There are not too many volcanoes that are like this, but this one explodes. Et donc euh, ce fameux volcan a donc explosé en 1902. And so in 1902 it exploded. Et a détruit environ 30 000 personnes. And it killed around 30,000 people. En quelques secondes. In a few seconds. C'est dû au fait qu'il y a un gaz qui fait plus de 1000 degrés. There's a gas that was expelled that is uh, above 1000 degrees. Donc avec la déflagration and with the explosion a détruit 30 000 personnes. It killed 30,000 people instantly. Bien, euh, 
La réforme donc est arrivée d'une façon très particulière. And the reformation message arrived in a very peculiar method in Martinique. Il s'agit d'une sœur adventiste. It was an Adventist sister. Qui est décédée actuellement. She died now. Qui euh, est tombée sur une revue, euh, une revue un imprimé euh, de la réforme qui, vient de la, qui venait de la France. And she found um, a, a pamphlet coming from France from Et the reform movement. Après avoir parcouru donc ce, cet imprimé, elle a vu qu'il y avait le numéro de un numéro de téléphone. And she read that um, pamphlet and she found the phone number. Et donc elle a appelé bien sûr. She called there. Et elle est tombée sur euh, l'église de Tahiti. <laughs> and the number was um, the number of a Tahitian church uh, in Tahiti. Tahiti se trouve complètement à l'opposé de la mer des Caraïbes. Tahiti is completely exact opposite of Martinique. Parce que se trouve, euh, elle se trouve dans euh, l'océan Pacifique. It's in the Pacific Ocean. Maintenant, je ne sais pas comment euh, cette sœur a pu avoir cet imprimé. And I have no idea how this pamphlet came there. Et donc après cet appel, donc il, euh, les frères de Tahiti ont dépêché euh, un couple d'ouvriers. And so the brethren from Tahiti uh, sent um, two workers, le frère, husband and wife. Le frère Edgar et Hélène Maria Soussé. Um, brother Edgar and his wife. Donc ils sont Helen, arrivés dans, dans l'île euh, sur l'île en 1980 environ. And they arrived in 1980. Et qui ont rencontré cette sœur. And they met this sister. Et donc au fur et à mesure, d'autres personnes, les adventistes, se sont joints à ce petit groupe. And as they were working, more and more Adventists would join. Donc après euh, un certain nombre d'années de travail, hein, euh, plus de 50 personnes, euh, enfin on a eu 50 membres mm -hmm. d'église. After a few years of work, we had about 50 members over there. Malheureusement, euh, les ouvriers ont abandonné l'œuvre. Unfortunately, these these workers left the work. Et euh, beaucoup de membres aussi. And a lot of members left as well. C'est bien qu'aujourd'hui on se retrouve avec une quinzaine de membres. So today we only have a fifth, or around 15 members. Mais là, l'Éternel bénit aussi le travail qui se passe en Martinique. But the Lord, fait, is, the Lord is really blessing the work that is going on right now in, 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 um, in Martinique. D'autres personnes commencent à s'intéresser. More and more people every message. day are coming to the church and um, uh, getting interested in the message. Voilà. Je n'ai pas grand chose à dire. Mm -hmm. Est-ce que, que, est que tu voulais faire un, un souhait Est-ce que tu voulais exprimer un souhait de prier pour... ah. Oui. Mm -hmm. euh, donc, euh, je voudrais donc déjà merci de nous recevoir euh, chaleureusement. Like C'est la première fois que je visite euh, le Canada. It is my first time that I come to Canada. Et donc, euh, je ressens une certaine chaleur euh, fraternelle I, et humaine. I feel this, um, warmth, uh, among so, donc, merci. So, thank you for your, um, Your, uh, good reception. Donc vous avez juste vous adresser une requête qui, I would like to ask you one qui serait de prier pour les frères de la Martinique. That you may please remember Martinique uh, in your prayers. Bon, il y a des membres qui sont volontaires, hein, qui veulent que l'œuvre avance. We have members of there that are very um, eager to see the work progress. Nous n'avons pas encore d'ouvriers. We don't have a worker there yet. Nous faisons avec les moyens du bord. And so we're trying to do our best. Mais Dieu nous assiste. But the Lord is uh, assisting us. Voilà. Donc and merci us. déjà d'avance. So thank you very much prier. for your prayers. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much for this um, brief report from Martinique and experience. I'm going to ask Brother Diane to come here for uh, experience and uh, after Brother Walter will be ready. You forgot to say brief experience. Brief. Okay. Well, how many of you canvassers want to go campus in Martinique? Wow. Well, unfortunately, we don't have uh, many books uh, in uh, French. But uh, if we decided to print books in French, how many of you would be willing to donate for that purpose? Donate money. Okay, can we have the ushers, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you are going to receive a, an invitation to help out with that purpose. We are actually uh, working on it. So, by God, there are many countries, many French countries that have no literature and they would like to be going canvassing. So, we are working on, uh, on printing uh, uh, French books. So, hopefully, we'll go to Martinique as well. Okay? Uh, so, start learning French, please. Uh, canvassers because we will call on you when the when the yes yeah from Ottawa you are already ready so just pray about it and the moment we have the books 
uh, we will count on you because you will be experienced canvassers, right? Yeah, praise the Lord. Well, I want to share a brief, very brief, extremely brief experience um, in Australia. It's a fresh one, so I just went there and, like I said, um, uh, I was determined to try different scenarios as far as uh, uh, the way we go canvassing is concerned. So I went by myself, I went with a young uh, uh, fellow, and I went with another adult, um, and everything worked perfectly. But this time I went, when I went by myself, uh, I could notice that I still had um, the same mindset that I had from the beginning, uh, since I went to Sweden canvassing in 1995. Can you believe that? 1995. I, was, I had just been baptized a few uh, months earlier and the brethren sent me to Sweden to canvas. I didn't know the language, um, but it, uh, the experience I had in, in uh, Australia made me rem remember of the fact that I had a principle which I could die for. Uh, which was never skip a house, especially when, when you had a feeling that there might be some success waiting for you at that specific house. But usually we train the young people that in case somebody is not at home, they should go to the next house instead of wasting their time. Because in the time that they are just waiting in front of a door, could be used uh, helping somebody else. So I went to this house in Australia, I knocked at the door, and um, nobody answered, so I went to the next house. But when I came out of the, um, of the next property, I realized that the next door uh, neighbor, who I had already uh, uh, went to, I, I, um, I had already gone to, she was mowing her lawn in the backyard. And this is why she could not answer. So I went back, I went to the yard, I waved, but she was so concentrated, so focused on what she was doing that she, she didn't even notice me. So I went a little deeper into the yard and she still didn't notice me. She just turned around and kept doing her job. So I said, wow, well, what am I going to do now? So I went to a few other houses and then I came back and she was still not there. You know, I went, I rang the bell and she was not there. So I, I didn't want to go in the backyard and stutter her, you know, and you know, uh, who knows, she would call the police or something. So I just went and canvassed a few more homes, and then I went back, and I was ringing the bell and ringing the bell and waiting, and suddenly somebody talks right by me. She was behind the bushes by the front door, and I didn't notice her. So this time I was the one who got a scare, you know. But I know that if you go canvassing while somebody works in the yard, it is so much easier for you to canvass the, the health books to people who are working with plants and in the yard, they see uh, 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 the, the prevalent color in their eyes is green, which gives you peace, you know? They are not aggressive at all and then do, they don't mind when somebody interrupts them because they need a break anyway, right? So this lady just said, hello, can I help you? And I was, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice you. But um, we had a, a longer than regular uh, chat about health, about plants, because she was working with them. And I, I noticed one plant that she had pulled out of the ground because she was weeding. And I said, you know, that weed that is going to dry in a few hours, do you know that that is good for your health? No. You know, and, and she, she wouldn't know. So she, um, um, she was, how come? I said, yeah, th there, are, there are plants that we are stepping on and they could benefit us so much if we just knew the properties. Um, we can use it uh, externally on your wounds. You can use it internally if you dry it and use it uh, for a tea. And so we talked for a long time and she was so impressed with it. And, and then we got to the point of talking about, um, uh, about the books. So I showed her a few of the books and uh, sure enough, and I, I kind of expected her 
to get uh, plants that heal, first of all, because that's what we had been talking about, and foods that heal, because they usually go together. People appreciate both of them. Uh, what I usually tell them is that, you know, foods that heal prevent sickness. And just in case you went overboard a little bit and you got sick, plants that heal are the ones which complement the other and help you get well uh, after you got sick. So it was a good experience and I just want to encourage the young people because you are going to, uh, to be placed in situations where you want to not go back to a house that you already canvassed. But when the Holy Spirit inspires you to go back, just go because there is surely something waiting for you. And um, uh, even though we have rules that we need to follow, sometimes you need to follow your, uh, your conscience when uh, the conscience tells you stay a little longer at this house because the people are interested. The rule is don't stay too long, go to the next house because that's what canvassers do and take their names and their telephone numbers and pass it on to the Bible worker. But sometimes you have that feeling that you need to say one more word, so don't worry about it. Just do what the Holy Spirit inspires you to do because usually you would not go back after you, go, you canvass five or six more homes, you don't go back to the same house. But I had this feeling that I needed to go and sure enough, the lady was just the right person uh, to purchase. She was interested, and I praise the Lord for that. So listen to your conscience. It's great. I tell you, I, I think we are going to have over 30 young people because young people walked up to me and said, can I go canvassing? Um, it, it looks like uh, their hearts were impressed uh, during the study this morning and with the experiences that the young people are sharing that even the young people, the, the children want to go and they are asking me, can you please talk to my dad, can you please talk to my mom and ask them whether I can go or not. Uh, so uh, expect at least on Sunday some children to come with us and hopefully the canvassers do not mind if we send a child along so they can observe how you do the work because you know next year or two years from now they will be the ones canvassing. So let's try to be an inspiration, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Adrian, for uh, your experience. Brother Walter. Um, yes, before, actually, we can have a, a song. I'm going to invite Sister Viorica and Brother Stefan.
Thank you so much. So uh, I would like to invite Brother Walter for um, a brief report from the conference in Indianapolis. And after, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Jennifer to be ready for an experience. Uh, brethren, uh, about a month and a half ago, I was invited to be one of the speakers at the conference in Indianapolis that was held just last weekend. I have never been to this city before, and uh, I will just share with you some of the experiences we have had. Uh, the church in Indianapolis, or the conference, uh, maybe two-thirds of the people there are speaking Spanish, so we had translation as well. And about 170 people assembled for that conference. Uh, the theme of the conference was uh, on you have lost your first love and how to regain the first love. You know the message to the church in Ephesus? Good church, every pastor would like to have such a church, but there was a problem losing the first love. So we were exploring from different angles. Brother Jorge Cruz was one of the speakers and Brother El Eli Tenorio. Now, uh, I'd like to show you something, uh, what we did on Friday. They organized actually delivery of food to the homeless people in downtown Indianapolis. Now you hear some photos where different crews assembled and young people and we as workers went with them on the street, to the streets. Uh, so they had the bags with some food items packed and some sandwiches and then we were distributing to the homeless people. I have done it many years ago but not so recently. So you know what, I, it was, uh, we normally do it, they normally do it in the morning hours when it's uh, cooler weather but uh, we did it you can see some of these people who were uh, finding the homeless people on the streets. So it was a hot day, you know, 32, 33 <coughs> degrees. And I said, where shall we find homeless people now on the streets? So we came to downtown and we began to walk. And believe it or not, they were there on the streets, on the street corners. And particularly there was a bus station. And so in the bus station there is a sheltered area where they usually sit in cold or hot weather. So we came there and looking for them. So they were not there, so we went into the bus station, you know, in the waiting area. And you know, uh, I, was, um, I was looking, you know, how, who you will approach, you know? Who is homeless? You know, there are people sitting, you know, <laughs> on the benches. So you have to be careful that you choose the right person to offer this food, whatever. And, uh, but anyway, when we went out, this is actually what you see, the monument. This is the um, uh, monument uh, for the Civil War that was fought in Indiana in 1860s. And so, so you hear some of the young people who were assembled here and who did this distribution. So what happened, we found these homeless people, we approached them and offered, and you know what? They gladly accept these gifts. Um, so people who are in need, they, they receive the gifts. Uh, food and what, whatsoever. Uh, so, uh, young people, I was impressed with some of the girls who were there in that group and some of the boys, mostly girls. Uh, some of the sisters, young sisters, how skillfully they knew how to approach the homeless person, how to talk. They spotted them on the street in different, you know. There was police officers walking around. They were smiling at us and said, well, you're doing a good job, you know. And uh, so they also had literature, some brochures and uh, pamphlets. So as they were handing, you know, this uh, help food, they also handed uh, literature. Yes, there was a Bible verse with the sandwiches, so we were handing to them as well. So it was a very nice experience when we came uh, after that back. You know, there, there were, as uh, we mentioned, there were experiences to talk about, you know, what, what they experienced and how they helped individuals and so on. So this was a, a kind of a dry uh, a run, how we call it, for Toronto, what we will be doing tomorrow and so on. But, you know, as Brother uh, Marian men uh, Adrian mentioned today, hot day. You are thinking there is no one on the street, and you don't see them initially. But you go, and the Lord opens the door. This is in Britain from uh, Indianapolis from the conference, and many greetings to you. And they also uh, told us they will be coming for our conference in Labor Day weekend. Before I uh, finish, I'd like to tell you something, Britain, here in Canada and Toronto. We have noticed um, more and more people coming to our church from this community, local community here. 
non-Adventist and Adventist people are searching for truth. This afternoon we had one, you probably know, some of you met them and saw them, a mother and daughter came first time to our church. How did they find us? Through internet. And you know, a very interesting background. They are from Jordan, Jordanians, immigrated to Canada. The girl, the young lady, she, her name is Lana, she was born in Bethlehem, Israel. And she is uh, reading and watching online, and she came to a Seven Adventist message, and then she found our website. And she wanted to come to see our church. And so we talk in the office. Ellen Jolich was also with me, and I was impressed, you know. She said, I would like to talk more. I would like to hear what you believe, and so on. I will not mention other, there is a group of Adventist people, home, the home church, who have come recently to us, and they said, we study your Sabbath school lessons, 12 people. Here in Trouble, Dorian also knows the group, one of the brethren from that group. And they brought the boxes with spiritual prophecy, books, paperback, good quality. And they said, if you're going canvassing, we give you boxes, you give free to people. Desire of Ages, Christ Object Lessons, and so on, great controversies. And they said, we study your Sabbath school lessons. And you know, Sabbath school lessons, this is the teaching in the whole world. So we study the same thing what you study. We like what you do. I gave them last time a Good Way series, one package. The brother said, look, we like it. Give me more. I, he was yesterday in the church, or the day before yesterday. But yes, yeah. I gave him a box of 20 sets. And he said, we want all the members of the group to study this Good Way series. You see, brethren, we have to do our work. There are souls around us who want, who are seeking for truth, they want to join with God's people. We have to be true reformers. And we will see amazing things happening. May God bless you, young people. I'm very amazed hearing your stories. We are behind you, we are with you, and we will go next two weeks. And I trust that the Lord will give us more victories and great blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Walter. Uh, I'd like to invite Jennifer, and after I'm asking Brother Jim to be ready with a new experience. So we have, according to my paper, we have more experience than songs today, so this is a good sign, I think. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> so uh, please, come, Jennifer and uh, Brother Jim, be ready for next. Thank you. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to tell you a story about somebody that I met in missionary school through canvassing. Her name is Vicki Fletcher, and she comes from Colombia. And as I was canvassing, one of our assignments in missionary school was actually to do 10 Bible studies, and six of them had to be from absolute strangers. These kinds of things thrill me, but um, it was kind of, you know, the thought comes like, who would, who would say yes to that? I don't even know you, and what if I don't want a Bible study? But, you know, people are actually really interested. So I was at a house, and my canvassing partner and I were just canvassing this woman, and she didn't seem interested, and we didn't even think of her being interested. But, I, but we got in the habit of asking people to help us out with Bible studies anyway. So I said, you know, I'm a student at this missionary college and one of my assignments is this and you have to grade me um, would you be willing to help me out and she was she said yes and then um, she ended up buying lessons for living and then a week later I went to her house for the Bible study and I came with Daniela the local Bible worker there in Sydney and I think it was so providential I was supposed to go with my canvassing partner but I couldn't, she wasn't able to, so I, I just took the Bible worker from there and we went, we went together and um, when we went to her house and I started giving her the Bible study, immediately she started pouring out her story and I couldn't finish my Bible study. <laughs> so I said, you know what, that's totally fine, I'll come back next week, we'll finish it and then you can give me the grading paper then. Um, and usually we have trouble extending the Bible studies because what we try to do is um, get them to continue. And what she was telling me was, I came from Colombia, 
I was raised Catholic. I grew up with nothing really in my home. We had a very poor childhood, and I've been searching and trying to raise my children in the fear of God, and I don't know how. I don't have the patience that I want. I don't have, um, you know, the knowledge. I don't know. I try to tell them about God, and they say, yes, Mom, I know, and I don't know why I'm doing bad things, but I don't know how to do the good things either. And these people are in contact with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is leading them to us to teach them what the truth is so they can be in tune with these things. And then, you know, she, I never met this woman before, but I knew that I loved her and I wanted her to be in heaven. And when we were doing studies with her, it was like we had known her for years already. She trusted us with her children. She trusted us with all of these different things. And she continues Bible studies even till today. But um, it's important, I think, that if we get contacts from this canvassing project, that we do studies with them. Because if we don't, they, are not, they just need to be taken care of. And what was interesting was that Vicky, her brother, is a Jehovah's Witness. And he never offered Bible studies, but I guess since we got there, he was like, yeah, why not take Bible studies with me instead? So now she started taking Bible studies with both, and we were just praying, you know, Lord, we're not here to force her. You help her to discern what is truth. And she's so sincere. Um, for a while, just recently, I got a text saying that she said she wanted to stop Bible studies with us because she was going to take them with her brother, and I, I was like, Lord, no, please, you have to continue working with her. Like, she's not in our hands anymore, but she's in your hands, so you have to, have to show her what is truth, keep her sincere, and, and I know you'll bring her back. And then we got a text saying that she actually wanted a visit from the Bible worker again on Tuesday, so we'll see what that brings, but... Yeah, these, these people need our help, and I'm just really excited for who we're going to meet these next few weeks, and hopefully this experience encouraged you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, so I would like to invite Brother Jimmy for uh, experience, and after we're going to have a song, youth song, song number 291. So all the youth, please be ready for next song, 291. Brothers and sisters and young people and young canvassers and canvassers to be, I am very excited about what is taking place. And there's one reason why I am excited about this because I remember what happened 35 years ago in Puslinch. The very same thing that is going on here happened there too. And we were in training and our trainer was Brother Daniel Devine. No, Brother Daniel Dimitru, excuse me, Dimitru. Uh, he also baptized me into the reform and he also trained me to go door to door. Now, we know about uh, Brother Dimitru. Uh, he was a very great, successful call porter and canvasser. And uh, one afternoon, it was uh, kind of around about two o'clock, and this is when uh, it was a nice sunny day. And uh, he asked me, where should we go? Well, at that time of day, most of the people are at work. You're not going to have too much success knocking on doors. So I says, why, why don't we go into this little uh, small town of Waterdown? Now, Waterdown uh, on their main street is quite quaint. It's like a little village. And uh, he says to me, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to stagger. Well... He would go in one door and come out, and I would go in the other door and come out, and he would go in the next door and come out. Well, uh, we shortly found out that uh, the owner of these places, because it was Main Street, we're going in, in, in and out of the businesses, and we were not having too much success, success uh, because simply because uh, they were busy with their customers, and we didn't want to intrude and be rude and cut in on them and try to gain uh, their attention with us. So uh, as we're going along down Main Street, uh, we came to this one particular business place and Brother Demetrius says, okay, it's your turn to go in there. 
And I looked up and I saw over the sign, and I kind of hesitated. I said, no, no, I think I will let you do it this time. And what was over the sign was a butcher shop. Now, we know what kind of attitude that a butcher has, don't we? And when you go in there with plants and health, and it's already been opened up and planted in such a way where it is a pictorial prospectus, and we are going to try and convince this uh, butcher how important it is to study uh, about plants and, and, and good food, uh, raw food, and so on and so forth. And you know what? Uh, a thought came to my mind, and it wasn't a very good thought, but I said to myself, Brother Dimitri is not going to be successful here. <laughs> and I was determined that it wasn't going to happen the way we had planned it to happen. And so he opened up the prospectus and he went from this one page here and he explained, well, these pictures here uh, are photographs from National Geographic photographers. Wow, this was very impressive. Uh, and then we turned to the other page and we opened it up and then here was a nice sketch. And these sketches were not photographic but they were drawn by a very famous artist. And he took all the paints to put all these nice drawings of the plants and of the herbs and everything from page to page. And, and that was impressive too. So each time he was turning the page, uh, the butcher said no. And so again, he was going on talking and he turned another page and, and uh, we tried to make a plea to how would this be for you? And the butcher said no. So there was about six or seven no's and here I was in my mind thinking, oh, this is not going to work. This is, we're wasting our time here. I said this all in my mind. But Brother Dimitri did not give up. He kept on going and going and going. And then all of a sudden, the butcher says, yes, okay, fine, this is great. I hear what you're saying. And you know what? I have somebody in my family who is sick and they would really enjoy this book. What did this do to my <laughs> preconceived thinking and idea? Wow, this is something that I learned in doing call porter work or canvassing work. And never give up because what is canvassing all about? It's not a, about selling books, is it? It's not about how many books you're going to sell or how many lease books you're going to sell. What is canvassing about? Praying that you are able through the power of God to put that book into somebody's hands and then let the printed page do the work that it was intended to do because you know you cannot argue with uh, ink and paper, can you? You cannot argue with the Holy Spirit. You cannot argue with the word of the truth. The spirit of prophecy, uh, the Bible, whatever it is, it speaks for itself and does not have to be defended. This is my message for all of you would be a canvasseurs and those who are experienced never give up and when I heard the one that was knocking on the door and the knuckles are getting sore that's when something wonderful starts happening and it will happen every time for each and every one of you this is my prayer to share with you this afternoon thank you thank you so much Brother Jim, for this experience, and remind us one more time, never give up. I'm going to invite all the youth for the song. And after this song, Brother Marian Sirbu, please be ready for, uh, to give us a reflection from the work in British Columbia.
So next item, it's a brief reflection from the work in British Columbia. We have here Brother Marianne. And after, I would like to ask Sister Vera to prepare with uh, experience related with Martinique, I think. So Brother Marianne, please. Happy Sabbath to everyone. I'm glad to be here uh, by the grace of the Lord, marvelous grace that he led at us here. And uh, first of all, I would like to convey the greetings from the group of British Columbia, and especially from Brother Eli. He asked me to do this. So actually, I talked to them, and they uh, now are you know, in the church as well. And uh, I'm amazed because I thought uh, without worker, because Brother Eli is traveling a lot, and uh, they cannot survive. But I said, no, oh, it's okay. We just have the DVDs and they put on the screen and they are, they are okay. Praise the Lord for this. And uh, more than that, I would like to share an experience that I had uh, in um, British Columbia. Because all of us, we talked about uh, our discussions are focused on canvassing. Why don't say something about canvassing? One of those days, uh, I was thinking about um, to share the experience with you next Sabbath when we'll be in, in a young uh, meeting or something like that, but it's good now before we start the, this project. So first of all, I would like to share a Bible verse where I found that even though the enthusiasm of the young people is very precious and they will be working in the front line from tomorrow, right? But also, have, we have to look back to the experience of our old brother. That I know, like Brother Jim said, uh, they were before us. They were doing this before us. Even though they have not uh, today the same enthusiasm like were in the years before, they have experience. And I saw that even in the, the Bible, uh, Second King chapter 13, when one of the kings of Israel, he was afraid how to do, how to lead the people. And he went back to the leader, the spiritual leader at the time, Elisha. And Elisha was sick, old, and said, well, please help me to do. I'm in trouble now. You remember that? And uh, Elisha said, take your bow and arrows. You remember? And said, but... I'm not letting you do by yourself. I will show you how to do it. So he took the hand, put the hand of, over the hand of Josh, and he teaches him. So my request and my prayer is that the old, um, not old, the experienced people, no, nobody is old here. The people with more experience and in the past, please, if you don't have the chance to put your hands over their hands, but put their names on your heart and let us plead for them, pray for them, because you know that the future is not promising much. I mean, and also related to these verses, I'm addressing to the young people that you know the experience of the king. Elijah said, take arrows, but didn't mention how many. So he took three, right? And shoot only three of them. And I said, you should have more than that. So related with this, um, coming back to my experience from Vancouver, one, one of those days uh, I went canvassing and I was by myself. That's not really the canvassing. I was trying to, to knock to the doors, but so many buildings, they have, you know, blocked the doors and you need code access and everything. You should call the manager if they allowed you to go. And it's not very, very easy to go into in the, the building. So I decided to have a, a table with all the books because I was not selling the books. I, want, I was just offering the books. So I had a big table with all the books, all the titles, and on the street. I am not sure exactly even now. I'm not sure exactly if I'm allowed to do that or not. I didn't ask the municipality if they allowed me to put that. But 
praise the Lord, twice or three times, the police officer, they stopped, and they smiled to me, they saw the sign, they saw everything. So I, I thought, yes and what? It's okay. Because I'm not selling or I'm not forcing the people. I'm just smiling. And because the friends from the, the group, they, uh, they ask what I'm doing the Sundays and the other days, I say, I'm doing this work, missionary work. One of them is a, a Canadian, African Canadian. He said, I will, I will go with you. You know, brother, in the last time I didn't have much work, so I'm between jobs. And I think the Lord will help me with this. If I'm doing his work first, maybe I'll get a job. I say, for sure. I'm, I'm just going to promise you, if we'll do the first, the, the work of God, the Lord will, will pay you back. And he, he came with me, and we had the same experience. We prayed, we fast before the day, and then we said, Lord, in our prayer, if we can contact only five people, we'll be pleased with that. I'm just asking you, it was good to say that or not? Good or not? No, that's true. We're limitating, kind of limitating the Lord. We had more than five, but our prayer was not the proper one. Yeah? So we had five people, they give address, they give the phone numbers and everything. Of course, at the time we went in the um, African uh, zone and Brother Paul was, I'm calling him brother, he's not in, a member of the church, but in the future. He had much success there because the, the people, they were, you know, he knows the mentality, he knows the culture, he knows everything. So he approached very, very well the people. So after that, we prayed for a few days and fasting just to help Brother Paul to get the job. So it's not easy in a city as Vancouver to not have having job, you know, the rent and the other expenses. So... We fast for three days, me and him. And I know that the, not fasting, fasting is preparing our heart to be humble to the Lord. But praying, the Lord answered right away. He gave not one job, but two. And then oh, he went to the interview and got the jobs. And then I said, oh Lord, I don't know exactly if it's good because now he's not coming with me. <laughs> I was a little bit upset and I went by myself and I was a little bit sad because uh, sometimes my uh, opinion is when you go canvassing it's good to be too, right? That's from the Bible. But when you are alone, sometimes you get discouraged. Some people they reject you, some people they say no, some people they say poison to the books. I said, what's wrong with you? You didn't read. How, how, how can we express that they are poison? So they just cry, and that's kind of discouraging you. But praise the Lord, because the Lord gave me an experience in one of those days. Uh, I was on the street with the, the books, and I get thirsty. I didn't have the water with me, and not so far away, it was Walmart supermarket, right? And I said, maybe I will leave the books here and go to, take, to buy a bottle of water. And I went, well, it took a while, a few minutes, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes or more. But I said, nothing valuable if they take the books. That's good, that's okay with me. Okay, and I left the books, when I came back, I saw missing three books, three important books. Desire of Ages, uh, Great Controversy, because, you know, when you look to the table, you see they are missing, right? And Step to Christ. Oh, I said, Lord. I hope that it was not a Christian and not a reformer or Adventist. You know, my prejudice or something. I said, I, I hope that it was outside of the church. But questioning, who was that? Who did that? Maybe the people they just thought maybe are valuable and they think to take some money. And the Lord gave me the answer right away because I, I was not com confused with my mind, right? It, it was not right to think in that way. And I saw a lady coming with the two children in the, in, beside her, her and said, I am the one that I stole your books. Well, thank the Lord. You didn't stole, you took, because I left here to, to, to do the work. I mean, the Lord, the angel will do the work. 
And she said, you know what? I just get baptized. Now I'm Christian. I wasn't Christian before. And I'm so eager to read. I said, these are the books that you need now the most. So I know that uh, so many things we can share, but this is kind of brief experience. We'll continue to share my, more in the future. And I'm saying that even though we will be discouraged in the work of canvassing, the Lord will give you the positive attitude and positive experience to show you that He is with us. See, I wasn't pres there present, and the books, they, they went in the, the pers to the person that needed the most. So we need just to start, and then the Lord will take care of everything. May the Lord bless us and be with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Marian, for your brief experience. I'm going to ask Sister Vera to come here for a new experience related with uh, Martinique, I think. I'm going to give a free plug to Brother Bruno and his group who are here visiting from Martinique. As most, some of you may know, um, uh, I was down in Martinique in, in, at the end of February in March for two weeks. Uh, I think you, you know, most of you know Brother Dragan Ivanov. Yes. Uh, this is a different kind of missionary work that we did. It was not a canvassing work, although canvassing had to be done in advance to spread the word that he was coming. That's an important work too. So he went down to, to do a, a health message, to give to the people a health message. Martinique is predominantly a Catholic, Catholic island. And you know, meat is a very heavy, heavy diet in, in Martinique. So his message was maybe not gonna be so popular, but you know what, it was a very, very, uh, successful, successful message that he gave. Um, you know what the kind of personality that he is. Brother Dragan does not know how to stand up in front of an audience and go, and this is what the foods you should eat, and these are good for you, and this is what it does to your system. He does not stand up there and just read the information to you. He's a very vocal person. He's a very animated person. He uses humor when he talks. And fortunately, it was really interesting because there were two of us translating, not just one translator. He, took the, he spoke in Yugoslavian, Serbo-Croatian. Okay, Serbo-Croatian because Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore these days. He spoke in Serbo-Croatian. I translated into English. And there was a young lady from France who translated into French. So it was here and here, you know. So it was interesting translating, but everybody understood. And they would look to him when he spoke, and then they would look to me who spoke, and then they would look to the other lady who spoke. And whenever he spoke, fortunately we, all, both of us who spoke with him, who translated for him, we had the same sort of personality as he did. So when he was really animated, we were animated too. You have to be animated when you're translating for him. He doesn't tolerate just standing there and speaking like this, you know? So everything had to be interesting and you had to draw people to you when you were translating. And it was interesting for them and they wanted to come. And every lecture there was, people came and they were interested. But the most interesting thing I found were the invitations we received from the two, from two radio stations. Two radio stations. One was, an, was a small radio station in that island that was only for that island, right, Brother, Brother Bruno? The first one was the radio station just for that island. And the gentleman who, I think, who introduced us to that program, he was an assistant, I think, to the mayor at the north of that island. Is that correct? Yes. And he was a very interesting personality. He came and spoke to us at, one, at the last seminar that we, that we held there. And I think he spoke just as long as Brother Dragan did. He was so affected and impacted by the lectures that, that what Brother Dragan spoke about. He had been 
uh, a vegetarian himself, a vegan, I believe. He was a vegan himself for 30 years? Something like 20, 30 years he had been. And he was so affected by this lecture that he was drawn to, to come. And he said, you have to come back. If you come back, we will help spread the message. We will, we will tape the, 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 the seminars. And, and they gave us free, they would give free, um, uh, the, place, the place where we would give the lectures. They would, they would provide the, 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 the source for us where we would be able to do it. He was so affected, and even the mayor was, was uh, you know, that he spoke to of that small place where we were at. They were going to uh, give us the place where we would, where we would be able to, to, to do the, the seminar, the seminars. Uh, they were all very, very enthusiastic about it. Uh, and they hadn't even met him before. The mayor hadn't met Brother Dragon before because he was out of town or something, I believe, at the time. Uh, but he wanted to meet him, so you have to come back. Okay. So the second uh, seminar that we, the, the second um, rather radio station that we were invited to meet, that was a really interesting one. They were an international radio station. Now this was going to be broadcast internationally. Internationally. They taped the whole thing. We were supposed to be there 45 minutes. We were there two hours. Two hours. And they had questions. They had people calling in. And they had questions for us. And that was also translate from, from, from Serbo-Croatian to English, from English to French, and, you know, and vice versa, because when they called in. Now Dragan, he knows, Brother Dragan knows um, English pretty well. He also learned French pretty well, with a lot of mistakes in both, but he understands. But he's really good, you know, he's pretty good. He's pretty adaptable. So we can make ourselves understood um, between the th among the three of us and, and the, the, the two, there were two moderators who were also very interested. And uh, the one was rather portly, shall we say, uh, and very, very heavy meat eater himself. And when he was there, he said, oh, this is going to be about vegetarianism and veganism? He said, that's it, I'm out of here, you know, and he, started, he got up as if he was going to walk away. But he was so interested in the subject matter himself. He stayed there, he, he just canceled all the other programs, two hours we were there. And he said also, you have to come back. We will take care of the programming, we will take care of the venue where it will be held, we will, we will spread the word everywhere. And they, pro, they um, broadcast this everywhere. It is on their website of the radio station. Now, tell me this is just chance. The Lord leads. Okay, the Lord leads. People who have never heard of, people who don't care about religion as such, this is the way the Lord leads. The only problem is the word has to get out more. And brother, when we were speaking with Brother Dagon, and uh, there was another brother, from, Brother Heli, was it Helio? Baker. Brother Baker, from, um, who, who is in charge of all the other islands there, right? St. Lucia. He, um, he and um, Brother Dagon and I were talking about it, and we were saying that what we need to do is bring in canvassers for at least two weeks beforehand to do a blitz of the island, you know, to spread the message, to, to invite people, and they will come. There were people lined up, we could have gone for at least another three hours on that radio program. They were lined up to ask questions. They wanted to have answers about the health message, about understanding why meat was bad for you. And they were interested, they wanted to know why. So we need to provide them with these answers. The health message is one way to get across to people. You know, that is a very important, it's a very important tool, right? And Sister White tells us that that is one of the messages that we must spread to people in the last days. It's a, it's a very important tool. So this is, Brother Bruno's right, he said we need, we need to go there and help them out. And this is an island that hasn't had any activity and very few members but we need to spread that message. 
And I've seen these people who are interested, and we need to go back. Don't just drop in and do some work and then go away and leave, you know. That is the biggest mistake that you can do. You have to keep going back. You have to keep these people interested and keep drawing them in. So it's very important that we go back to Martinique and continue to spread that message and, and draw these people closer. But I've got one challenge for you here. There are many, many good canvassers here. I see many young people. But I'm going to give you a challenge. I think we have the best canvasser here in Canada. I think we have the best canvasser. And I think she's sitting, if she hasn't gone out, I think she's sitting somewhere here. And I think her name, her name is Christina. Christina is prime canvasser here in Canada. And I think we can all learn from her. When we were handing out the Reformation invitations for the Reformation messages, man, you should have heard her. And I think my, my, um, my nephew, Michael, he was, he was walking around with her as well. She was in that area with her when uh, she was handing out the invitations, and he was really impressed with her. <laughs> so I think we could all learn a big lesson from our Christina and watch her when she canvasses. So like it was already mentioned, never give up. Never give up. And keep going back. Don't give up on those people. Even if they say, like, like Jennifer said, um, I want to go take lessons from someone else, don't give up. Keep going back and show love to those people because that's what they need the most. And uh, Christ sends us to, to those. He never gave up on anyone else. He never gave up on me. So let's not give up on anybody else. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Vera. Uh, as I said, we had more experience than songs today, so it's a good sign. I'm very happy for that. Um, we learned today, never give up. And I think canvassing, missionary work, it's a, one of the best tools to uh, fix the problem in the church, to spread the gospel, but also to heal the church. This is very useful for all of us.